Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1177, 1177, June the 30th, 2020, Tuesday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, let's go ahead and cover the news of the last uh, 24 hours or so. Alrighty. Well, it uh, looks like the protesters, <laughs> and I use that term very loosely, the protesters have descended on the Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin's house. This occurred on Sunday afternoon. That's right. Jenny Durkin, the Jerkin Gherkin. The Jerkin Gherkin, Jenny Durkin, Seattle Mayor, had a visit from the Summer of Love to her own very own home on Sunday. Now, it looks like, from what's uh, in the news story here, is that Mayor Jenny Durkin, the Jerkin Gherkin, and her family are in the state program to keep their address addresses confidential because of the death threats mostly related to her work as a U.S. attorney under President Obama. Mayor Durkin and her family are in the state program to keep their addresses confidential because of the death threats mostly related to her work as a U.S. attorney under President Obama. So, it looks like uh, her address is not all that confidential because the woke uh, zombies found her house and they went and protested out in front of her house on Sunday afternoon. So, there you go. The Jerkin Gherkin, Jenny Durkin, Seattle Mayor, the Summer of Love has found its way to her front yard. Couldn't happen to a nicer commie. And now we were told that they were supposed to be um, <clears throat> removing all the blockades and restoring uh, the town, the six blocks, uh, whatever they call it, uh, the uh, commie zone. They were going to restore it back to normal Monday morning. But apparently there's some holdouts still demanding... Um, they have a list of demands that they want met. They say they're not going to leave until their list of demands are met. And their demands are crazy. They want to completely defund the police department. They want uh, hundreds of millions of dollars funneled to various people. Uh, themselves, I assume. I mean, it's just insanity. But that's what you get, uh, Mayor Durkin. When you let the stuff happen in the first place. Had she shut this down in the first place... And never let it happen, she wouldn't be where she is now. She's kind of stuck now. She thought those were her peeps. Guess they ain't. They have no love for the Jerkin Gherkin Jenny Durkin. Okay. Well, there you go. I guess there's nothing more to update on that other than, uh, you know, I guess she got doxxed <laughs> by her very own crew. Okay, so let's move on to the next story, which I find pretty interesting. It's uh, The information here is not necessarily new to you if you watch my Towergate videos, but let's go ahead and go through this. Uh, Sidney Powell now says that Michael Flynn was targeted because he was aiming to investigate serious corruption under John Brennan's CIA. It appears that Brennan and company were running billions of dollars off the books through the CIA using outside contractors for classified work and of course the primary contractor being used was <laughs> TAC, the Analysis Corporation. Now I've done probably three or four videos focusing on the Analysis Corporation. That's John Brennan's little intelligence company. And of course uh, in that video I laid out how he uses, um, so what he does is he uses his position in government to funnel government contracts through subcontractors. And these subcontractors will then sub, you know, they'll subcontract the work to Brennan's firm. <laughs> and a lot of that money finds its way into Brennan's bank account. And of course, we went through the uh, track record of TAC, the Analysis Corporation, and they appear to be a bunch of incompetents. They don't really do anything well except for transfer billions of dollars of government contracts throughout their little group of 
contractors who really do very little. They're supposed to produce reports and intelligence and things like that, but nothing they report ever seems to be very good or very accurate. It's pretty much of a scam. And obviously Michael Flynn knew about that, and I don't think he probably got it from my video either. He probably knows it from being an inside player in the intelligence business. So that would certainly make sense. And I imagine just as soon as Michael Flynn is able to speak freely, and I think that won't be long, he's going to start talking a lot more about that and other things. So Mr. Potato Head, uh, of course you can Google this for yourself, just Google TAC, John Brennan TAC, and uh, enjoy. You can read away for hours and hours about all the things that TAC is involved in, all the government contracts funneled to them, and then look at the look at the principles of TAC, Mr. Potato Head, look at the principles of all these other subcontractors that flow money back and forth between them. You'll see very familiar names. All deep staters, all who are looting us through government contracts. It's almost like this office of net assessment where Stefan Halper worked. He was supposed to be producing reports uh, that would go to various, the Pentagon or whoever, so that they could understand better uh, potential threats. But as we find out, uh, that these reports were garbage. Just garbage. Worth of, of no value whatsoever to the Pentagon, to the Defense Department, or anything else. It's just a slush fund. And the government is littered with this kind of deep state garbage. Just littered with it. Michael Flynn knows all about it. Trump knows a lot about it. A lot of people know about it. So, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you can, again, you can Google TAC, the Analysis Corporation, John Brennan, whatever, and you will find, you will be reading for hours and hours and hours about all this corrupt activity that goes on uh, around Mr. Potato Head, his friends who, who are involved in all these uh, types of private contractors, all their money comes from government contracts. They do some commercial work. Private corporations will hire them to make reports as well. But mostly they, uh, mostly they are getting government contracts. And so Brennan, I think what's being alleged here is that Brennan and his company were, as it says here, running billions of dollars off the books. Now, I don't know what they mean by off the books. Uh, that suggests something illegal. Um, what I read about TAC doesn't necessarily sound illegal. It's certain, it's, it's legal corruption. They are a contracting firm. The government pays billions and billions of dollars to private contracting firms to produce all sorts of things, including intelligence reports. And Brennan owns this company that does this type of work. And He's the CIA director, or he's in some other capacity working for the government, so he's able to move that money uh, into his firm and other firms like it. It's the same thing we would see with like Dick Cheney or Paul Wolfowitz or any of those neocons. They did the same thing. They go work in the private sector where they're paid huge sums of money. Then they go into the government sector where they're then in position to award contracts to those companies they used to work for, where they did nothing other than their name, who they were, and the fact that they represent powerful interest in Washington. Pay them two or three million dollars a year. Give them a position on the board for three or four years. Then the next time a Republican or whatever president their party is, is in power, they get to go back to Washington and make decisions to take out government contracts with the company that was paying them the millions of dollars when they were on the board. They just bounce back and forth from the private sector to government. When they're in government, they're awarding contracts to the private companies that they're going to go work for or have worked for, uh, they're getting the contracts. You see, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a legal system of corruption. It's legal corruption. And so what I read sounded to me like legal corruption. You, you, you know, there's no real laws being broke because it's the rigged game that, 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 that is the swamp. It's, that's, that's how things are done. It's been done that way for a very, very long time. Now, what this would suggest here, this story here, is that they were running billions of dollars off the books through the CIA using outside contractors for classified work. 
Now, the only way that Sidney Powell would know about this is if she had been told that likely by Michael Flynn. And, and likely, she would not come out and say something publicly like that unless she thought there was some evidence to back it up, which means Flynn probably knows where the evidence is if there's something illegal going on here. And it sounds like when you use phrases like off the books, funneling or running billions of dollars off the books, sounds like a phrase that you use when you're talking about something illegal. So this would be a step beyond what I've reported on before. Before we just did a deep dive into TAC and its relationship with John Brennan and this type of thing and how he funnels money to these contractors and eventually it works its way into his bank account. But I, but if I remember correctly, I, I don't recall there being any suggestion that, that what he was doing was illegal, unethical as hell, corrupt as hell, but a lot of things in D.C. are, but they're not necessarily illegal. Should be, but currently are not. This suggests something illegal. I'll be very interested uh, when Michael Flynn is free to talk that hopefully we'll start learning some more. He should write a book. He should write a tell-all book. Screw John Bolton, the walrus. Let's have a Michael Flynn tell-all book. Now that will sell some copies and will definitely get my attention. I'll buy a copy. I will absolutely buy a copy. And I assume that's in the works. There should be a book. There should be a, he should write a book. They should make a movie. The whole nine yards. The Michael Flynn story needs to be told to the entire country. It needs to really understand what happened here. Because right now they don't. Now, let's follow up on this <clears throat> Russian Taliban story from yesterday. So we have the White House, Russia, and even the Taliban saying that the New York Times story is false. The Times story is based on an anonymous source which provides no details on how the operation took place, what troops were targeted, how many meetings were convened, or even how the Taliban would receive their payments. Now, as I said yesterday, well, the latest on this is that it never made it into intelligence reports or presidential briefings or never even made it past the DNI because apparently there may have been some reporting about this but they could never confirm or any of this. They could never prove any of it. It was just raw intelligence that was never able to be corroborated. So in that case it's not going to make it to the president. They're not going to sit there and tell the president about things that they can't actually prove. Otherwise they'd be sitting there for hours and hours they probably get thousands of pieces of raw intelligence like this. And the only time that they're going to go tell the president is when they've actually verified that there's some truth to it. And so obviously the president wouldn't have heard about it. We have DNI Ratcliffe saying that Trump and Pence were not briefed on these allegations. And we have Richard Grinnell tweeting that he never even heard of it. But they need to find out who that person was that leaked this information to the New York Times. They need to get to the bottom of it. This stuff has got to stop. There is no story here. This is intelligence. And this is not the type of thing that you leak to the New York Times. If this individual who leaked this to the New York Times really believed there was some merit to this, they should have gone to their boss or to the inspector general in the intelligence community or somebody, the DNI himself. You don't go to the media and drop some garbage like this. This creates a lot of problems. We're in the middle of negotiations with the Taliban right now in Afghanistan. We have a delicate situation with Russia. They're in nuclear power. This, the only thing this did was provide more fodder for some more Trump-Russia garbage, which Madame Botox, Pelosi Galore, 
immediately jumped on and said, well, we really don't know what the Russians have on Trump. I'm so sick of her. This stuff needs to stop. Journalists have certain privileges, man, but there's got to be a line where you draw a line at some point. This is not a whistleblower. This is not, this is not anything that should have been given. Well, you certainly got to find the person who, 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 who leaked this to the New York Times. Whoever that person is, whether they're at the NSC, at the Pentagon, wherever they are, whoever they are, that person uh, needs to be castrated, stretched, and quartered, and then taken and tried for their crimes. Held accountable for the crime because this is the you, you, you can't do this. If you work for the government, whether it's the Pentagon, an intelligence agency, the National Security, whoever you work for in government, this type of thing is not what you're being paid to do. You're not working for the United States government when you leak this kind of crap to a New York Times reporter. There's no benefit to the country, there's no benefit to the Pentagon not to the president, not to our foreign policy uh, professionals. The only person that benefits from this type of garbage right here is a political opportunist, a political adversary. This is a political move, and these people need to be rooted out. Well, it looks like four Antifa members have been charged for destruction of the Andrew Jackson statue. Good. And that means that that's a federal crime, which means they'll be looking at some serious time in the federal penitentiary, where they will not find too many people uh, who have much patience for snowflakes. And here's another thing, you know, about a lot of people in prison. I mean, you can just assume that there's just a lot of really bad, bad people in prison. But there's also a lot of pretty good people in prison who just made a mistake and got caught. A lot of people get away with it. Some people, a lot of people get away with it. Some people don't, they get caught. You know, I know people, who've been, I've never been to prison, but um, when I was in the Army, I, I had to pull duty twice at the United States Army Retraining Brigade. Now that's prison, my friends. <laughs> that's prison. And uh, our job for a week, I was a, both times it was a one-week detail, was to basically watch these prisoners. These were a lot of guys who got caught with uh, a little bit of weed in their locker, uh, DUIs, where someone may have been injured in, the, in an accident, caused, and they were drunk when they, when they crashed or whatever, but a lot of minor drug charges and stuff like that. Uh, some guys, you know, punching an officer, something like that. It's the United States Army Retraining Brigade called USAR, Fort Riley, Kansas. And uh, that was a tough deal. Um, felt sorry for a lot of those guys. And I'd be talking to them sometimes. They're just really good guys. They just made a mistake or just got caught with a little weed or something. And I remember on that detail, the type of things that we would have them do. Um, they would have these uh, railroad ties and they had a big field. They'd have these railroad ties stacked up. And these guys would be out there in the hot sun, and we had to supervise them, and they issued us uh, shotguns to hold on them. We had to hold them at shotguns. They're in ankle chains. These guys are in ankle chains. And they would have to pick up these railroad ties. One guy would grab each end of a railroad tie, and they'd have to pick it up and walk it about 100 yards to the other end of the field and set it down. Then walk back pick up another one and take it over. And I had about 25, 30 of these guys on this, on this prisoners on this detail. And then once they got them all moved to one side, then they pick them up, have to take them back. And then when they got done with that, we take them over to a rock pile. They pick up these big, pretty good size like boulders <laughs> and uh, pick up these boulders and take them about 50 feet away and start another rock pile. When that was built all the way up, then they'd move that rock pile to another place. They just kept moving the rock pile. They did this for 10 hours a day, every day. Hard labor for getting caught with a roach in your ashtray. Yet a son of a bitch like this can leak a story to the New York Times and he'll probably win a uh, Pulitzer. 
Anyway, these four Antifa members were charged for destruction of the Andrew Jackson statute. Uh, now, these guys deserve to be moving railroad ties and moving piles of stones. Send them to the United States Army Retraining Brigade. <laughs> I can tell you firsthand, they won't like it. And I'll tell you all, you get in prison, man. You know, these, these social justice warriors, uh, they, their act will not go over well in a prison. There's not a lot of political correctness going on there. They, they can't, you know, call and make a complaint. You know, that this, people kill you for that. I mean, some of these young kids have got themselves involved in this Antifa thing, are going to wind up in federal prison. Many of them are. They're in the process for, I think they arrested over already a hundred of them already, and they're still looking. Uh, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of these people arrested and you're going to find when you see these people behind these Antifa masks, you find young, young, young people. A lot of these people, you're young. You find women. They're going to federal prison. I mean, they practically ruined their lives, probably have ruined their lives over this. Horribly misguided. Horribly misguided. Where are their parents? Well, it looks like Hunter Biden uh, had Secret Service protection on more than 400 flights. We now know that because of a FOIA request received by Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch. So between 2009 and 2014, Hunter Biden had Secret Service protection on more than 400 flights, including going to 29 foreign countries, five visits to China. And of course, we know that on one of the China trips, Biden signed a multi-billion dollar deal with the Bank of China, which was for a private equity fund to invest Chinese money overseas. Cost to the taxpayers, about $200,000. So he's a crackhead, gets kicked out of the army, doesn't really have anything going on. He's not doing anything at all, as far as we know. All of a sudden, he ends up jet-setting around the world on our dime, while his daddy is the VP, while he's cashing in on all sorts of what looks like shady deals. Something is definitely rotten in Denmark. Fish for dinner last night, Marge. Well, what do we have here? Speaking of commies. We have Bill de Blasio. He's now going to cut $1 billion from the New York Police Department. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. That's a fantastic idea. Crime skyrocketing, murders up in the city, violent crimes off the charts. Back to where they were 30 years ago, before Giuliani came in and fixed things. Not only that, just in this past week, 300... New York uh, NYPD quit. And he's going to cut a billion dollars. <laughs> you can say goodbye to New York City. It's done. If you live in New York City and you can get out, get out now. That's going to become a very, very violent city. It already is. It's going to get worse. One billion is what they're going to cut from the NYPD. And what's he going to do with the billion dollars? <laughs> He's going to give it to young people. He's going to give it to young people. <laughs> the man's Looney Tunes. He's going to destroy that city if he hasn't already. <clears throat> Can you imagine 4th of July? Can you tell the difference you've ever been in a large function on July 4th or Labor Day, can you tell the difference between a firework and a gunshot? I'd say there's a lot of people that cannot tell the difference between a firework and a gunshot, especially where there's large crowds. If you are looking for the perfect opportunity to engage in some mischief, this is exactly the type of situation you'd be looking for. Here's my recommendation. If you're going to go out and celebrate 4th of July, shoot off some fireworks and do that sort of thing, I would recommend that you 
Go someplace where it's a relatively small gathering of friends and family, people you know, on a private property, and avoid the large gatherings. That would be my advice. Because, you know, there's lots of opportunists out there, and there's a lot of people fanning the flames. One of the persons fanning the flames would be our good friend Mad Max. Mad Max. Maxine Waters, one of the dumbest people in Congress. Probably she's a slight bit smarter than Hank, what's his name? The guy who worried about the island flipping over. Hank Johnson, I think his name is. The island flipping over. <clears throat> From being lopsided. No shit. So we have Mad Max saying, quote, Trump wants black people to live under the domination of white power. Trump wants black people to live under the domination of white power. There is a power structure whether it's in your family, in your place of business, in your country, or in the world. The people who you should be worried about, I wouldn't describe as white. They might be Caucasians, but it's not their skin color, which is why you should be concerned. It would be their motives, and their connections, and their ability to create a lot of chaos and spread a lot of evil. Unfortunately, it appears that this movement, which a lot of people who belong to it, Black Lives Matter, a lot of them are just actual people who are normal people who believe that we need to address some issues. And that's fine. It's their right. But I don't think that they understand who's actually behind the larger organization. And it's those white people with white power that they should really be worried about. It ain't your rank-and-file neighbor who happens to have white skin. It's not the guy at the local drive through not the guy at the local grocery store, not the guy at the bank, not this white guy, not that white guy. I think the white guys we need to be concerned about are the people who are actually funding Black Lives Matter, along with some Muslim Brotherhood types over in the United Arab Emirates and other places. You know, at this point, we've got a lot of problems. Um, I wish I could tell you that I think it's going to all just sort of blow over, but my gut's saying it's not. It's been going on now for over a month. And because there's so much money backing it, and so many people have so much to lose if Trump gets reelected, um, destroying the country for some of these people is preferable to four more years of Trump. That should scare the hell out of you. It does me. And I look at whatever happens on election day, regardless of which way it goes, I see, I see things coming unglued. If Trump wins, all hell's going to break loose. If Trump loses, all hell's going to break loose. Because that means Biden will win. Or, or a Democrat. And that means these people will be really empowered. They'll feel like they have carte blanche to go out and engage in even more violence. This, this is like giving Antifa the rubber stamp. A Biden win, a Democrat win in November, is essentially a, a thumbs up to Antifa to keep destroying the country. I don't see I don't see it going very well either way. If you live in a blue city or a blue state, I would highly recommend that you get out if you can. If you cannot, and a lot of people cannot, for God's sake, arm yourself. Arm yourself. Get some of that uh, freeze dried food, or some type of food that uh, lasts a long time get some cash out of the bank, 
Keep it in your home. Prepare. <clears throat> For years, I was never I was never one of these people who uh, believed in like the end times are coming or the banks are all going to collapse and all this kind of stuff. I, I never. I mean, I understand these things could happen, but I've never been. I guess a prepper. I've never been like that. I mean, I own firearms. Um, I keep a little cash in case you know you have an issue with the banks or something. But I never really got into like full prep mode or anything like that. But I'm starting to consider it now. Things are looking kind of edgy, kind of dodgy, a little rough. And I'm looking at November and thinking, either way, Trump wins or loses, I think all hell is going to break loose. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. But if you can get out of a blue city or a blue state, do it. If you can't, arm yourself and prepare to defend your life. Hope for the best, plan for the worst. I've never seen it quite this serious. There's a lot of people with a lot of money behind this. A lot of people with a lot to gain from destroying the country, from creating a, some sort of a internal culture war disguised as a race war. There's a lot of things going on, man. Probably a lot more than we even know. But, as I once uh, was told, if you're involved in something that you don't understand, get rid of it. This idiot reporter in a press conference yesterday asked Kayleigh McEnany, quote, does Trump believe it is a good thing that the South lost the Civil War? Then he asked, is Trump going to continue to allow Confederate flags at Trump rallies? I've watched just about every major Trump rally. My sister and brother-in-law have been to two or three Trump rallies, at least three, I think. I've never seen or heard of a Confederate flag at a Trump rally. Now this idiot who asked this question, he is the fiance of the reporter who asked Trump once before, back at a presser event a couple months back, asked him about the fact that does he feel that he should still remain as president, seeing as how he lost more American lives in six weeks of coronavirus than we lost in all Vietnam. That woman who asked that question is the fiance of the idiot who asked the, this question. Does Trump believe it's a good thing that the South lost the Civil War? Confederate flags at Trump rallies. This son of a bitch should be booted out of, out of that press room and never allowed back in. This just in, Justice John Roberts sucks, but you already knew that. Well, this St. Louis couple is under investigation by the George Soros-backed U.S. attorney in Missouri. You know, the man and woman who, after the radicals had busted down the gate in the private community where it's plenty of signs, no trespassing, private uh, property, no trespassing, whatever, they break through that they bust down the gate. They're actually on these people's front lawn, right there at the base of their front porch. And the man and woman come out. He's got a, what appears to be a uh, semi-auto rifle. She's got a handgun. They're literally out there defending their property and their lives. They're seriously concerned for their lives. Now, based on that, this uh, Soros back U.S. attorney in Missouri has now launched an investigation into them. Not the rioters. No, no, no the people who came out to defend their property. And she had a statement today where she said, we will not tolerate the use of force against those exercising their First Amendment rights and will use the full power of Missouri law to hold people accountable. See what I mean? If you live in a blue city or a blue state, you better get out. I don't know what to tell you. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow with more Target. See you. Bye.